There's been a, a bit of a scandal in the UK that has now come back up, of course, the grooming scandal that never ends, because of course, you can't get off Mr. Bones' wild ride when living here. And uh, well, a new report has come out showing that some horrible stuff has been taking place and uh, I thought we'd go through it. But the most interesting thing being the public debate around it, and uh, as we'll see later on, please do stay tuned for it, we'll see Martin Dubli, Dubli, is, is this a rare time where I'm going to have a relative white pill segment and you've got the black pill segment on about nonsing? Uh, I don't know about that. We'll, we'll see how it goes, I suppose. Okay. Anyway, but he debates some leftists on GB News, and I thought we'd take a look at it because uh, it's amazing. But firstly, of course, just to mention, on the website, we have some new content. This being the Hangout, the conversion... Sorry, the conversion with Google's... Conversation. Sent, conversation with Google's sentient AI being at 3.30 today. So go and check that out if this is live on uh, YouTube. should be around by that time. Go and check it out after this video as well, of course. So, I... I no. You know what this is about? Because... I, I know, John, that's why I said if you're on YouTube, it should be live on our <laughs> website. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, if you're watching this segment, by the time it's on YouTube, you might still have a chance to tune in. That was my point. Anyway, let's go to the uh, next link here, because we can see the fact that, uh, of course, the, the old meme from Naz Shah, being that uh, the victim should shut up for the sake of diversity, <laughs> being a thing that I'm never going to let go, frankly, because she's still an MP, somehow. It is hilarious. Yeah, as you can see, David noting down here that uh, well, her being just a, a, a rock's throw from Oldham as well is not so, so uh, it came a million from, miles away. It came from an Owen Jones parody account, uh, and her excuse was my finger slipped, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and this has, of course, been a bit of a joke for a long time, but it turns out that this is more of a serious position than we originally thought. Because if we go to the next link here, we can see the report I was talking about. So, Rochdale grooming gang boss, known as Daddy, worked as a welfare officer at Oldham Council. Damning report reveals how police failed to flag his arrest to his employers, leaving other children exposed to tragic abuse. Imagine my shock. I, I mean, didn't even bother to tell his employers that. Uh, by the way, uh, guy nonce. So, there you have it. And the notorious ringleader of a grooming gang portrayed in the BBC's Three Girls series was employed as a welfare rights officer by Oldham Council, a major report has revealed. And uh, just going to do as a side note real quick about Three Girls. You ever watched Three Girls documentary series? No, I have not. Very good. I I'd recommend it, but it's a bit hard to get these days. I'll be honest. I have the BBC deplatformed it. Off their own platform. Because if you go to the next one here, you can see this is just a screenshot from, uh, when you can see two images of the hmm. uh, actor playing the individual here. I presume it's the same guy because he's the main character from what I saw. And uh, there you have it. So, so what we're talking about is the, the real life guy he was portraying is... Or the actual actor? The, the guy he's betraying, obviously. Okay, okay. It's a documentary about what happened in Oldham. And, and they've got some uh, retellings of what happened as well, yeah. I assume. Okay. But this is a, a series that went up. And if you go to the next one here, we have the fact that uh, this actually is what inspired the Finsbury, Bars, Vin Finsbury Park mosque attack. Oh, if really? You so, as you can see here, this is the BBC themselves saying what led Darren Osborne to kill. Osborne began to exhibit other known warning signs. He developed an irrational grievance and a sense of injustice that drove him to take matters into his own hands, the BBC write. It appears to have begun when Osborne became fixated on Three Girls, a three-part BBC drama about the Rochdale scandal in which most of the victims were white and most of the perpetrators were Pakistani heritage men. His partner told police how he had become obsessed with the drama, which aired a month before the attack. Commander Dean Hayden, the head of counterterrorism at the Metropolitan Police, says that this drama was the catalyst. There you have it. So the guy who drove uh, his van into a group of uh, Muslims uh, mosque, not related, obviously, to what had taken place, uh, he was motivated by the BBC's own documentary, or at least docudrama, about what had happened. Interesting. I also just find it amazing. So you can't blame this on Tucker Carlson, for instance. No, you can't PewDiePie. blame the bad man, Romney Tomlinson. Or it can't, it can't be him. They do actually mention him in here, and you may remember uh, people maybe, uh, you know, uh, not informed that he was blamed for this at the time. They even mention it in here that some newspaper articles are just like, well, it's his fault. The uh, messages with him, I swear. Uh, not true. Wait, wait, they, they tried to blame it on the bad man. Yeah, they tried to say that he had messages with each other and it just wasn't true, completely made up. Uh, it was the BBC that radicalized him. But then, of course, it's the BBC's showing of reality in Britain. You mean, you mean to tell me the BB? Well, you mean to tell me the newspapers lied about something? Yeah. So the the, the censorship around this issue of race and religious sexual abuse created well, a boiling pot in which this guy then did what he did. They also don't mention in here the three months leading up to the attack, in case foreigners might not remember this period. Which, of course, in the three months leading up, you had the Westminster attack, and if you go to the next one, you also have the uh, Manchester Arena bombing which, uh, again, a bunch of kids getting killed by an Islamist. If you go to the next one here, we then have the London Bridge attack, which took place just a, a short while before as well. Uh, BBC failed to mention any of that context as to why he did what he did. 
But the reason I'm mentioning all that is to tie back into the fact that this is so relevant to the news that has come out, that there are such you know, extreme responses to the revelations that the police were unbelievably awful. The fact that they just didn't deal with the situation. And the example here being, of course, also the fact that, as I mentioned, you can't find three girls on the BBC iPlayer anymore. Not available, okay. so you're probably going to have to take to the seven seas, I'd mm. imagine, to mm. uh, find a copy of it. Uh, amazingly, you can, you can, can. it's behind a paywall on YouTube, which don't make sense, because it's a BBC property. So it should be available on iPlayer for maybe free. They, maybe they licensed it out so that they could have, I don't know, it attributed to other people or something. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Or as you say, ya har fiddly dee, uh, Daily Motion <laughs> is the place for me. <laughs> this is where you're going to find that one. In case you want to go give it a watch, and I would recommend. Otherwise, we should go to the next one, because we go back to the article itself. They say in here, Shabir Ahmed, who led the sexual abuse ring in Rochdale, was nicknamed Daddy. And he was sentenced uh, to the Oldham he was seconded to the Oldham Pakistani Community Centre during his time at a local authority, meaning that he's a, he's a pillar of the Pakistani community locally. He was put in with the you know, community centre to work with them. Ahmed, identified only as Offender A in the report, is now serving a 22-year jail sentence. He was a sex predator and a former taxi driver, and described as the ringleader of a nine-strong group found guilty of exploiting girls as young as 13 at Tasty Bites, and another takeaway in Henwood from 2007. In Haywood. Haywood, sorry. Despite multiple concerns being raised about him and his arrest for the sexual assault of children, police failed to tell his employers. The report added that if they had told the council, quote, it may have potentially avoided the tragic abuse of other children. The report looked into the alleged grooming of children in council homes, shisha bars, and by taxi drivers in the town, and concluded there was no evidence of a cover-up or widespread child sex abuse in those settings. I was going on directly under our nose. We didn't do anything about it. No cover-up. No. Man, they, they mentioned it happened in all of these settings, but not a widespread situation. Not a cover-up, they swear. It, Although, you have to wonder, shisha bars. You, uh, you go to shisha bars much? Uh, no. Yeah. No, not personally. No, it's not a, a, a beautiful British pastime. Going out, getting some shisha. You know, I could I could go back over some of Shakespeare's plays, but I don't remember any mention, you know, from the 1500s or anything. Yeah, it's almost as if it comes from a certain group and not uh, well, the locals. Yeah, I, I also find it interesting how they always use incidents like um, I've already forgotten his name, the guy who went, uh, you know, ran over some Muslims at a Osborne. mosque. Yeah, Osborne. They use those sorts of things as an excuse to continue to not look into these sorts of incidents when they do happen. It's like, well, we don't want to inspire more. So you ignore it. This creates tension within the communities. Then some nutter goes off and hurts innocent people. And then they use that as an excuse to continue to ignore the problem. I mean, it's an amazing logic, isn't it? Because they, they don't see the covering up of crime as the source of those kind of events. It is instead the revealing of the cover-up that is the problem. And they're like, no, no, just do your job instead. Yes. Actually, arrest the guy instead of, well, pissing about. Oh, if we go to the next one here, we can see there's a, a, another link here saying, Oldham Council leader apologizes for failing to protect children from sexual exploitation and grooming gangs after a report exposes how one 12-year-old victim was sent away by the police, only to be reportedly raped by five men. Great. How's how's an apology? <laughs> How does an apology help? Oh, I'm really, I'm so sorry. It's like South Park with BP. Oh, we're sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. so sorry. Eh, not not good enough, really. I, I'm I'm not moved by that slightest. Don't know how she is. The authorities did fail some children. They say in here, notably citing the case of one girl identified only as Sophie, who was abused at age 12 after significant opportunities were missed to protect her. She went to Oldham Police Station to report being raped by an Asian man in October 2006. So what do you think they would do? Well, in a reasonable world, what they would do is take this information down, get this girl into protective custody, for instance, and then start knocking on doors. They told her to come back when she was not drunk. So then she, she was picked up by a man in a car uh, who then raped her in the vehicle and then took her back to a house and she was raped multiple times by five different men. Just awful. I mean, it's, it's so simple. You know, you think it would be the simplest policing work in the world. You know, a lady comes to you, says she's been raped. You're like, oh, oh my God, you know, I have to take care of you. Uh, instead, they're just, nah, sod off, love. Or he's getting in this car with this lad. Uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. And, and then, this is before the confusion over whether she would have been a woman or not. <laughs> yeah. In the modern era. And so there's uh, also, obviously, because this is Britain and we live in a normal country, so the people who write about horrific crimes have to, for some reason, pledge allegiance that they're not members of the far right. So you have to the report themselves saying here, despite legitimate concerns, 
of the police and the council in Oldham, of the far right, capitalizing on the issue of grooming by predominantly Pakistani men, the authorities in the town, which suffered race riots in 2001, did not shy away from tackling the issue, the report said. I'm sure they didn't. I, 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 it's, so, it's so ridiculous. You have to go, you know, I care about women being raped. Oh, I'm not a white nationalist. I'm not a white supremacist or anything, but I do care about women being raped and think it's a bad thing. Mm. Do you not think it's really, uh, really bad optically to try and associate uh, being morally appalled by rape to being a far-right attribute? If you care about rape, well, the only people who care about rape, according to that reports writer, surely, are white nationalists. And that's how they think about the world. Why, like, are, you, why are you advertising the white nationalists in such a way? Weirdest statement, but there we go. I just uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. There was no evidence of uh, any, any such concerns that race or religious aspects had anything to do with this. I mean, weird statement. Or on the blue, just having to mention him. Why? If we go to the next one, we have the Manchester News, a uh, more local paper here. Uh, noting that uh, now there is reasons to believe that that is what took place. They say here just some things that are, are even worse, uh, or at least, you know, it gets worse in regards to that 12-year-old and everyone else. Girls being drugged and violently raped were said by social workers to be putting themselves at risk. Fantastic. Again, council doing amazing work by being like, eh, well, they deserve I, it. I thought you don't blame the victim. Shut up for the sake of diversity. Seems to be, again, coming yeah. true. Oldham Council gave taxi driver licenses to men convicted of sexual or serious sexual offences involving women and children. Good. Fantastic. I can't see anything going wrong with that. I mean, just every single time, it is the worst possible outcomes seems to come out of every one of these reports. But in the cover-up section of this particular article is the most revealing part. Because you may remember, I just said, in the Daily Mail, the uh, report writers were like, well, well, well we don't want to help the far right. I'm like, okay. So that's why we investigated the race. So there was nothing to do with race or religion mm -hmm. in any of this in the cover-up. I was like, ah, right. Uh, that's not what they always say in their own report, though, once you actually scroll down. They uh, quote here saying, We have seen no evidence to suggest the messaging was to protect Oldham Labour Party, or that this direction was specifically led by local politicians. There was, however, a strong belief held at a serious level by both Greater Manchester Police and Oldham officers, also shared by politicians, that the threats presented by shisha bars might be exaggerated by the media and used by the far-right interests to promote their agenda. Right, okay, so there, there was ideological blindness. You've just said there is, in I, your own report. You wouldn't have to keep addressing this if there wasn't obviously a problem going on. And the fact that they but, keep having to deny it means that there are probably members of these communities who have recognized this, because everyone can recognize this, and they're just trying to just gaslight them into telling them, just don't believe what you can obviously see with your own two eyes. But like they've just said it. I mean, they literally just said, Greater Manchester Police, Oldham officers, and Labour politicians had a religious bigotry that Pakistanis could not be engaged in this to the extent they were. And it must be a myth of the far right, because they didn't want to look into the shisha bars as a source of this. Like, well, okay, then you, you've just admitted that surely you are ideologically blind to that. And you as, didn't want to look into areas associated with Islamic culture. As, as far as I'm concerned, by covering up this sort of stuff, these people are complicit yeah. in, in all of this stuff. These people should be charged as well. I mean, it's the fact that their opinion, as they say, is, is based on racial bigotry, that Islam is a brown man religion as well, which uh, is not. It's, it's a, an a-racial religion, funnily enough. However, that's not how the abusers see it, of course, which is something to keep in mind. But if we go to the next one, this is the facts of the case, and that's, you know, one thing. That's the news in, you know, the sending of, well, another horrible thing that continues to go on in the UK. However, the, the public debate about this is probably the most amazing aspect. And I saw it this morning in this clip here from GB News, in which they had uh, Martin... Du 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 Sorry, mate. I just I can't do it. I, <laughs> I will say it. it. Martin Daubney. Daubney. And uh, him debating some woman. And uh, Daubney makes fair points, which is just that, you know, this bad. And uh, she takes rather exception to that, because it's not very PC. Let's play the first clip. Oh, dear. Clip. He was, for 18 years, a council safeguarding officer, the precise person who should have been taking care of children, went on to rape 30 children. Um, it's an absolute heartbreaking tale, echoed in previous reports in Rotherham, Oxford and Rochdale. And it once again shows a, a Labour authority um, too afraid to investigate um, for claims of being racist because these are ostensibly Pakistani men preying on white working class girls. That's a fact. That's not racist. That's just the truth. And they're so scared 
of the blame culture that comes out of that. They would rather turn a blind eye and seriously, seriously fail these communities. And, and in many ways, this is representative, I think, of how liberal politics has completely failed the working classes. They, they just can't say the truth for being called racist. I'm going to Rotherham at the weekend. It's an area where the Reclaim Party um, are very well liked. And this, this, sort, of, this sort of scandal um, has to be dealt with because it's still going on. This isn't historic. It still goes on, the problems persist, and it's an absolute betrayal of Britain. The area where I start to really struggle with you, Martin, is that I, I think the focus on race here is, com- is a complete... It's a, it's a complete distraction no, it's it's from what we see as is, is a, gen, a general the, the abuse of power. The perpetrators are Pakistani men and the victims are white working class. In this instance, Your attitude is the reason why instance, these reports are needed because everyone's too afraid to speak the truth. That's the point. I think the, the point here is that wherever you have people in positions of power, they are all too often able to exploit the vulnerable. That's what we've seen here and victims are not believed. It doesn't matter whether the perpetrator is, is black, it white, does. whatever. Oh, it's, just, it's just power imbalance, bro. Just, just, don't, just don't worry about it. It's just people in power do that. And yeah, there is some truth to that. But <laughs> but we're talking about some very specific examples. Do you think if he had just said it's men raping women and left all the rest out of it, do you think she would go like, in this instance, we, n- we need to stop talking about how it's men raping women? No. It, we, you need to it's, stop putting the blame on men, you know? It's obviously ridiculous. Like, we're talking about race based child sexual exploitation. Well, race has nothing to do with that. I mean, we've like, seen... We've but it's race-based. How the race you know, not seen, have anything to do with it? We've seen the text messages that these sorts of people send to one another where they're talking about how I want a white so-and-so, you know, uh, nasty words, shall we say. They specifically prey on these people because they don't like them for their race. Yeah. It's I, awful. I mean, the, the endless statements from the victim saying this, endless statements from the perpetrators saying that's why they did it. Uh, endless statements when they get caught guilty, just shouting Allahu Akbar in some examples. There was uh, some Kurds who did that. I can't remember which city that is because there's so goddamn many, isn't there? But then just the, the uh, head-banging moment of her being like, it's not very politically correct, Martin. No S. Yeah, who cares? That's, that's the point. You muppet. <laughs> like you've got honestly. To, who cares? Like, but like the political correctness was the reason that these kinds of scandals take place, and it's the reason that all kinds of scandals essentially end up taking place: cover-ups, or you know, not looking into a matter, or not doing your job. And he's like, okay, well, we need to smash through the political correctness. She's like, don't know if I want to stop the uh, practice though. That, if we if we give up the political correctness, you know, this might end. So uh, how will I virtue signal if I'm not allowed to be politically correct, or yeah. if people? People just laugh at me for trying to be politically correct. Let's stop trying to be politically correct and just start trying to be correct again. Factually. Yes. Instead. Although this uh, this is the clip that GB News uploaded to their Twitter page that I saw, and uh, people might not have seen the full thing, but the, the next bit that she said is somehow even more extreme and, of course, gets into uh, talking about the whites because, of course, it's not racial until she needs it to be. Let's play. It where, doesn't where matter. Where is it going on at that scale in the country? I mean, I, I, I'm so, I apologise for because the examples are too prevalent, right? We saw it with the BBC, we've seen it with the church, we've seen it through the Met Police. All of those are far predominantly white institutions. What if about only the, what if about only the abuse of women was something that was limited to one racial group, that is absolutely not what we see. What we see is that people in positions of power are able to exploit the vulnerable, and that is what needs to be addressed. I also think there's a massive need to hugely increase investment in social care services because far too many people are left vulnerable and exposed. Um, let's move on to something a little bit less controversial. The benefits <laughs> no. of Brexit. <laughs> I, I mean, then they just move on. But just, what a weird intersectional argument. Like, the it is. police... The, uh, the church and so forth are white institutions, therefore uh, uh, just I mean, as bad as any other kind of race-based CSC, except what race-based CSC was taking place by the church? Well, I mean, if she wants... God, if I know... It's, Let, it's not real. I mean, that's that's the point I'm getting at, which is obviously, like... Obviously, I mean, she's pointing out, yes, we know the BBC covered some stuff up, we know the police have covered stuff up, but uh, I don't think people are making excuses for them in the same way that she's making excuses for these groomers. That's true, but also, just getting back to the point, she's like, no, 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 race has nothing to do with this. That's the argument, it's the debate about the racial aspect here. And the fact that you've got racial-based child abuse, you know, from the groomers in such cases as the grooming gangs. And she said, well, what about Jimmy Savile? It's like, I don't think Jimmy Savile was picking his targets based on race. No. Nor do I think that people were like, well, of course, uh, TV presenters from, I don't know, whichever decade he was in, were uh, notoriously looking for a racial war. 
They're yeah, like the, se- the 70s and 80s before mass immigration. Like, but like, it, it, as if Jimmy Savile was engaging in a race war against ethnic minorities, and therefore he only raped ethnic minority kids. It's like, what, like British kids? The, none of that makes any freaking sense. The church, again, engaged in a race war against... Well, if she wants Wait, to... What are you talking about? Well, here's one. If she wants to extend it out into these white institutions, well, let's take it into the Lords. And what's a recent high-profile case of a Lord doing something? Oh, it's Lord Ahmed. Yeah, and... Oops. Uh, <laughs> but there's the... I'm getting back to the aspect yeah, of yeah, yeah. racial lines because that's where her argument lies. And you'll notice that when it's about a minority group, she has to say, well, look, only in this case, so there's no real racial aspect to it. But when, of course, she then wants to make it one, the only way she will accept it is if we're blaming white institutions. I, I don't even know what the hell that even means. Well, I mean, it means I know English institutions is I, what it is. I know it's intersectional speak for this institution's English, therefore it's uh, evil. But the idea that the police is a white institution, like, what? Like, okay, the majority of the British public are white, therefore the police are a white institution, well, therefore any rape <laughs> that goes on within the police service is race-based CSE. Well, well, Callum, obviously what you're ignoring is that only white civilizations would create an institution to uphold law and protect the public. And that's a completely race-neutral statement that has no damning implications for any other races across the world, you know? Sure, but it's just that it's so <laughs> transparent that this individual here is just evil, frankly. I mean, who on earth would talk like that in a, you know, non obviously evil context. Why would you deny it in the case of where we actually have an example of people who preyed on people because of their race and religion, but yet when it comes to something like Jimmy Savile or the police or whatnot, you for some reason suddenly decide that race is important again, and now it's the white man who must be brought up on his racism. Why? Because For white on white violence? Yes. The white on white violence, as you could even name it, is an it, I no, they, none of that makes any goddamn logical sense. It is just her trying to obfuscate crime when it's about ethnic minorities because it's race based, and when it isn't race based, but, but there's white people involved. Just how do I blame the white man? I mean, there's all that is. There's all that defense is. And it's pathetic to look. I at. mean, sure, surely, surely to to try and stretch the arguments a little bit, the fact that it's white people doing it to other white people in the examples that she would put forward makes it anti-racist rape because they're not <laughs> <laughs> because they're not. Hurting people of ethnic minority status. This is like Hindi's argument on slavery. He was like, well, British slavery, only black people. Pretty racist. Arab slavery, multicultural. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there you have it. But there you are. I suppose uh, we'll move to the next one here, just to uh, make a point as well. There's also the Labour MPs locally who all failed to say sorry, as David notes here, which is, uh, they give you a quote that uh, this kind of thing, it is an uncomfortable and disturbing fact that abuse takes place in every city, town, and village. The smallest village. The vicar of Dibley is engaged in such <laughs> things. Or, sorry, the imam of Dibley, yeah. perhaps. But if you go to the next to me here, here's just a stock image of Exmouth. Um, 98% English, uh, 0% race-based CSE, to my knowledge. Not something that takes place there. And probably something that doesn't take place in 90% of all other towns and villages. Again, the point, race-based CSE, or religious-based CSE, not just no, CSE. I mean, where I'm from, I'm not aware of any of this stuff that goes on, really. No. There might be some nasty stuff going on under the surface, but it's certainly nothing to do with people's race. And that's, uh, that's the thing that she wanted to obfuscate in the cases where it was prevalent and uh, make up, where it was white-on-white white abuse, which, I mean, I'm sorry, I just can't get over like a person like that would seriously argue in public. But there you have it. That's, uh, that's that. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the live hangouts we do sometimes. This one on Mega City One is not an aspirational future. And if you want to follow what else Carl is putting out, you can follow him on Getter at, at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.